that you want For all that you believe It's right to fight for what we want To live the way we please As long as we have done our best Then no one can do more And life and love Hello. Um... Yeah, sorry, I was booging on out to that. You weren't seeing that. That was quite fun. Uh, yes, hello, welcome to the Flash and Bloke podcast. I'm Siobhan. With me on my immediate right here, according to this thing, is Eddie. Top of the evening to you. And for being Irish for some reason. And, and um, uh, yes, Brian. Hi, I'm back. You haven't been anywhere. Well, be it's weeks. been a week since they've seen me. Gentle viewers, is that enough time? Is it really? Do you not think you should give and give it another week or something like that? Evening, Christian. How's it going, my friend? Um, right, so, yes, news. I'm sure there was some news somewhere down the line. Oh, hell. Uh, if anybody's going to the capital or to Hooverville, let us know, because Eddie and I are going to Hooverville. Um, in October, and I'm going to the capital um, in April because it's only five minutes down the road. Um, so it'd be silly not to go. Just sit there, drink coffee, and, and, and just say hello to people, which is all I do at conventions nowadays. Um, yeah, I can't think if there's any grand sweeping news. I don't think there is, is there? We've got the Build the Bear thing, which I thought I have to admit was very cute. Um, there, there's a little thing down in the bottom right-hand corner, though, that you might want to look into. A little thing, or activate windows. Go to settings to activate windows. Yes, all right. He keeps nagging me about things. Yeah, I will do. Um, I only, it's I just, only do it I means I'd have to wipe it's the C love. drive, all right? And then, hopefully, what happens if something goes wrong? Will you be there on Discord? Yes, but you won't be. Yes, I will. I'll have it on my electric telephone. <laughs> I don't know. I get nagged. You'll be going on about the dark crystal in a moment. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, let's get straight into this, shall we? And now from the world's BBC television's Doctor Who, it's Doctor Who. <laughs> That was pretty. Why isn't that coming up? It's doing the wrong thing. There it is. Hello. Uh, yeah. Um, I, had, I had that going on three little bits at once. It was lovely. Uh, right. Now. Hmm. Ascension of the Cybermen. Carries on, obviously, from last week. Uh, we've got the Doctor and Co. turning up at some far future crash site. Um, we're not quite sure when this is actually set. I mean, which cyber wars are we talking about here? Is it the old cyber wars? Is it the new cyber this wars? Might be the, the new cyber war. I, I have no idea. Is I mean, is this the same cyber war from Nightmare and Silver? Mm, possibly. Don't know. No idea at all. Um, but that's that. But is it an alternative universe cyber war? Because the Doctor is kind of manipulated and mucked up history by handing over the cyber I've got, I've got, I've got cyber dime, that's that's the Terminator but the, the, the cyber source Siberian. The from last week, that's the very chap yes, Siberian yes. or you could have said the silver so, splodge uh, you know what, I'll go with the silver splodge I'll I remember. like that, it's the silver splodge from splodge. now on splodge. it's yes. easier to remember yes indeed, yes. that's cool, the silver splodge um oh dear, I'm just going to um, try not to say the silver spooge Right, uh, I, I've got to admit, this thing, this, this had lots of nice spectacle and whatever. Oh, uh, the, it the felt a bit hollow, like... though. The Cybermen are very good. I love those, that new design. It's the yep. faces on and, them. Yeah. I just, the, the, the helmets and the faces, they're so reminiscent of the 70s now. Just the, it's that bit. It's not the muffs, even though they're there now. Yeah. It, it's something they're about the actual different. face. It's just, 
Yeah. Um, I like that a lot. It confused me, though. It confused I, I let you go first. No, no, no. I was going to ask you in what way. That they had all these cyber parts laying around. Couldn't the last Cyberman, you know, at least repair himself? He's a so religious he zealot. He probably but wears he his wounds face. with pride. He has this is what he's. A face. So, and let's also point out it may not bother him. It's a case of this is just what I am. You know, my army is complete. You know, this is I don't know. Um, he's a zealot, so it's probably one of those things that will happen eventually, maybe. But currently, he wears his scars with pride. That's that's the only thing I can think of. Eddie, what were you going to say? Well, uh, it confused me the whole the time jump going back to Ireland uh, oh, yeah. in the garden. So, so are we saying then that the cyber race is descended from extras from RTE's version of Call the Midwife? Because I get really confused. Uh, 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 and uh, <laughs> that to... okay, because, right. I, I've part... got to admit those scenes were different to any scenes, I think, um, that had been shown previously in Doctor Who completely. It felt like a totally different programme. Like you say, yeah. the RTE called call the midwife. Um, but it was, it was lovely, though. And the, 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 I'll not go straight to the end, but it, it was the whole thing around the, the, the Cyberman that brings and evokes pain on other Cybermen. It, it was, again, it's I'm confused. I'm not quite sure what happened tonight, but... <laughs> well, can't wait for next week. Yeah, next I week not. I think the whole thing's going to tilt. It'll it'll do something else, I reckon. Um, well, it's going to be like the Doctor Ruth person. It, they're never going to touch on it again. Oh no, they've got to bring her back next week. They've got. Well, to... maybe not next week, but in the next series. But, but the other thing that, that, that kind of confused me as well uh, around tonight was just me. Or was Graham really annoying tonight? The whole thing around maybe it's me. I'm a Scotsman, right? So we don't do glass half, half, half full. We're we're, we're glass, glass half empty. But he kept he's telling this guy, "Oh, these guys have been chased throughout the galaxy by Cybermen. They're potentially the last survivors on Earth. They've got a lot to be grumpy and pessimistic about. And this guy's I don't know if it was his brother or his good friend. Mm -hmm. It's just been murdered in front of him. And he's giving it. Oh, let's all get hold. Oh, oh, come on, cheeky chat. You was that mother? Yourself. He was annoyingly optimistic. But that, this guy's this guy's still trying to comprehend Welsh running away from the Cybermen that his brother or his best friend or his member of his family has died. And it was like, nah, again, just get yourself to... No, oh, no, he really annoyed me tonight. And I, I'm, a, I'm the biggest exponent. I love Graham, but not tonight. Um, I'm just thinking how far you've come in a very short few episodes. But You, you had a rant. It was lovely. It was blissful <laughs> to watch. <laughs> First yeah. episode, you wouldn't say boo to a goose. Now listen to you. <laughs> now you're ranting. Not, at, not you know, Siobhan uh, I, level, but I, it's I, definitely no, getting there. No, it's no, contagious. It, that, that, was, that, that was Scotsman mini, mini-esque rant. But no, Graham was just... No, no it was, please, too much. Uh, you see, now, guys... now I, want to, I want to invite Rabsy Nesbitt on. <laughs> so, Rab, what did you make of Ascension of the Cybermen? Oh, aye, aye, up. a tagged reference, mother. <laughs> aye, mother, aye, mother. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, okay. No, okay no, I, I you make a point. It. You make a good point. I Graham was totally insensitive tonight. And, and I've seen that to me. Uh, uh, either insensitive or is a case of look, this situation doesn't allow for this. You've got to you've got to keep it going, otherwise you're just going to fall apart if you stop and think yeah. and take that attitude. You well, know, then here's positivity, the as you said. You know, what exactly did Ryan do? Um, yes, uh, that's a very good point. Ryan was Mister Exposition. And there was one line he did, and I can't remember what the line was, but it really was as if he just said it, you know, rather than acted it, just said it. Because it was. Well, it there's was a... that one point when they're in the the shuttle where he looks like he's asleep, and honestly, <laughs> he probably could have been the entire episode. I don't know. 
Yeah, Ryan. Um, I, I I honestly thought to myself, hang on, he's sticking with the Doctor. He's going to be the one that gets killed if they kill somebody. Uh -huh. um, hmm. Well, there's the, the whole rumour that he's going to bigger and better things as well, isn't it? Some sort of Hollywood role or something. But I, 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 don't, I hope none of them die. I, 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 I think we've only just got the, the companions actually come into themselves this season. If they didn't take that away for us, give us another season with that group. With a less annoying Graham. You know, if this was Moffat, I would say that Graham gets assimilated. And then Ryan leaves. <coughs> <laughs> no, no. Graham accidentally falls back in time as a separate adventure where, right at the end of it, he's the very first person to be assimilated. That's what Moffat would do. And, and then, then he comes back as a Roman. No, no, no. You come back as the Sideman, then you get the flashback sequence to him. Doesn't matter. Um, yes, how do you think that Stephen Moffat would have handled this? Um, right. I found it a bit hollow, to be honest with you. Um... Lots of spectacle, yes, but as you said, Brian, um, Ryan just wasn't really used. Um, I love the idea of the little floating heads. That it sort of amused me to be more than more than anything else. Um, I had flashbacks of Sleepy Hollow. Hang on, I'm trying. I'm just to waiting think. for a Cyberman to take off his head and hurl it at someone. That's almost been done. It's, he's taken it off before Nightmare and Silver again. Sideman took the helmet off, took the head off, should I say, put it somewhere to make him think he was somewhere and his body was elsewhere. Nice trick. Um, Back in the Irish theme as well, so so this portal. Oh, yes, I wanted the, to talk about this that. This portal, yeah, Co Seamus. So another good Irish name, Seamus. So uh, I take it the co writer for this this was from Ireland or has some Irish connection? I think this is just Chibnall, isn't it? This is uh, all Chibnall. So let, let's discuss um, the baby in the in, in the in the in the room. Uh, hmm. When he fell off the cliff after being shot and then sat up again, it was very Jack-like. I thought. I thought, oh no, this is a bit odd. But right at the end, was... what it looks like once he'd aged a certain bit, what it looks like, he was dragged and taken to a chameleon arc. They put a chameleon arc oh, on him. I was actually thinking it was a cyberspace type deal. So did I. I thought it was part of the part of the torture exercise about the ascension of the Cybermen. Was this was part of the process to to take them to another level? No, this this this, this is Time Lord shit. That's what I think this is. It is Time Lord shit. Um, remember, the Master was found as on as a baby on the shores of the Silver Devastation. Ah, great, yeah. Um, okay. I, I think this is a Time Lord. Who, though, even though he survived that fall off the cliff with no regeneration energy at all. Um, it, it, like I say, it looks like he's been put into a, um, a chameleon arc and he'll probably be turned into a baby again and put somewhere else. Oh, what a horrific punishment. If it's a punishment. <gasps> Still horrific. Uh the timeless child this oh, of course yeah, so i was i was going to complain there was no reference to timeless child but the sense of it no regeneration right. just the same regeneration well, being was spun a back in the portal but yeah as for the portal that's an interesting thing if people well, have been coming if the humans who have been the, coming uh, who the old guy was no sir Barristan selby from game of thrones which one's that one uh he was the um he was the captain of the Gold Cloaks in Game of Thrones. He laughed ah, in... Righty-ho. I gotcha. Um, what was I going to say? You reminded me of something there. Uh, did I notice who that was? Oh, yes. What happened to the humans who did cross over, cross the boundary? They ended up on Gallifrey, we're assuming. Or, or, or does, does the, the boundary take you to... I don't know, maybe because the doctor stood up to it, that's why it's shown Gallifrey, but if you're a human that stands up there, maybe take somewhere totally different. It's a fair point. It's something we don't know. That's yeah. an unknown at the moment. Um, was the Master just waiting for this? He seems to be. It was like he was how waiting for the doctor to catch up. Yeah, but how did he know that would happen? And when it, when they jumped through, I was I was like, oh, it's the master, but I thought it was Jack. I was really hoping it was going to be Jack that jumped. Through. Yeah, I was hoping it was Jack. I was waiting for you. Miss me, right? 
Yeah, exactly. I was expecting the master, quite frankly. If anyone was going to come through that portal, it would have been the master. What we didn't get was Jody saying, So, you escaped from that strange underworld with the upward going pipes. But, but what, 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 what the entrance name is like, Be Afraid, uh, Everything's About to Change Forever. So, yeah. That's a river song just, line. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what happens next week. I mean, lot, like I say, lots of spectacle, very nice. Just a bit shallow, is what I thought. And he has uh, a ghost. Oh, it's the dog. He's been in and out. So we... Oh, we love the dog. <laughs> we so do we love the dog. dog. By the way, guys, I've just remembered, Saturday nights at 8pm, uh, we stream um, our RPG uh, with Adam Purcell from Staggering Stories and also Spanky. Um, just so you know, whilst I remember it, um, we're not doing one next Saturday, but we're we'll start doing one the, starting again the following Saturday. So in two weeks, Saturday, eight PM GMT. Um, we just it's just basically four for it. Five, five friends, yes, five friends just hanging out yeah. being silly. Um, anyway, sorry, I I digress. Overall opinions of this thing? I, I like to. Uh, I'm still, I, I, I still, cause it's, it's, I'm still processing it. Still got a lot of things to think about, but uh, yeah, it's a good setup for next week. Looking forward to it. That's just it. Yeah. It's a setup, isn't it? It's part one. So the payout's not going to be till Sunday. No, I know. So it's, it's going to be a long episode, though. It better be. No, it is. They got a lot of explaining to do. Yeah. Yep, they do. I've got a lot of explaining to do. Sorry, I'm just doing stuff. Um, hmm. We'll find out more, obviously, about the Timeless Child. Who is that? You know, who was that baby? Is it a time of punishment? Are they just hiding them? It's curious. It's, uh, See, I, the Cybermen I, thing doesn't really bother me. Like I say, these new ones look really nice. But... Ow, cat! I'm being clawed. Sorry, <laughs> chestnut. Ow! Is that, is, yeah, come up here. Come on. Yeah, I, I totally missed the Timeless Child reference. That's why I like that coming on here and talk to you guys, because it, it helps me think again. But yeah, uh, next week, hopefully we'll get some more exposition. Alright. And hopefully... Any... And see, that! See? Siobhan's going super evil now. I am. And <laughs> cats fall down <laughs> using claws! That was Doctor Who. Boogieing. That was me doing boogieing. Hello. Uh, yeah. Right then. So, mail. No speaky brains. Nobody ever contacts us. Right. There's been a mudder. Hi. Um, sorry. I get, that from, I get that from the fast show. Mudder. Hey, mudder. I oh, love it. Uh, right, um, yeah, sorry to digress into the whole we do an RPG on Saturday nights, 8pm GMT, starting in two weeks, uh, but um, yeah, I got, di I, I got digressed and then the cat decided to climb up me and then slide down me, which was nice. <sighs> Brian, how are your irregularities? Mental or physical? Hmm... I don't know. Should we use a transuranic element on him? Oh, well, no. Well, not well, whether it's human hey, life. No, no, no. You can't use That's why I'm asking. Should, should we life. use? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. I'm in my room. There's been no life here in years. We've been doing uh, watching a sapphire and steel. Introducing Brian to the concept of incredibly tense padding. Um, trust me, you have not seen the best yet, Brian. Um, oh, assignment boy. one, where uh, a little boy and the most annoying little girl in the world 
Um, they're out in there. Really? I didn't find the little girl all that annoying. Uh, uh, um, really? Really? She barely did anything. Just get, just get, just get in the ring. Caused all the trouble. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <coughs> Put her on an island somewhere. Anyway, they're in the deserted house. Parents get sucked away because the clocks have all stopped. And next thing you know, uh, Sapphire and Steel turn up. David McCullum and Joanna Lumley shut up Brian. Um, I haven't even had a chance <laughs> to say anything yet. Seriously, this week is terrible. He hasn't perved over Jody. All right, he hasn't perved over Jody. All right, we're now talking about Sapphire and Steel. You wait for it. He will, if I let him. And, uh, and after this, we're going to have a quick mention of Picard. So that's exactly. going to go really wrong. Um, you're a perv. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Uh, right. Only <laughs> um, as an introductory story, it asks more questions than it answers. You, well, I was really happy that still? they didn't actually film the sleeping. Because they filmed everything else they were doing in that damn house. <laughs> they just didn't film the entire crew sleeping. Remember, this was made by ATV, Associated Television. The same people who made a soap called Crossroads. Oh, yes. Oh. Um, Crossroads. We're not making Brian watch classic episodes of Crossroads. No, we're not. Please, no. no, no, we're not. No, no. Crossroads I, had problems. Event. It was very underfunded, and the cast were under pressure. Uh, there were flub lines. There was dodgy scenery. Um, yeah, and this is the same delete. company that's making this, so I'm not quite sure why there is quite so much padding when they could have maybe written more dialogue but did you find it spooky at all no mm -hmm. of course i wasn't a kid in the 70s watching this so i mean i i, I think that, that for us it, it takes us back to our childhood i, I was terrified watching this it used to be about half seven seven o'clock in the evening seven o'clock yeah. uh, viewers in scotland may have different programs Yes, that's right. I mean, yes. The only thing <laughs> was when they did the uh, special effects on Joanna Lumley's eyes, because that oh. was kind of frightening. Did, did you the, the, the actual story about how they actually did that? They put There's a the... making of documentary. If you look underneath yeah. the the, the um, suggested links underneath the uh, first episode, there's a making of Sapphire yes. and Steel documentary. Yes, I saw that. Oh, you did. That, that that poor woman was tortured to, to, for those glowing eye effects. There was no CGI back in those days. Right. Those were all practical. Yeah. Including the little time aliens being, you know, some guy standing up above the set with a light, with a flashlight going, yeah, that's an alien. <laughs> yep. Yep. Ooh, going up the wall You've there. You've got to admire the sheer gusto of it, the sheer brio, even, if that's the right word, I don't know, uh, of the, the damn low thing. Budgetness? Yeah. No, the very fact that they didn't give a damn, they just made the best thing they bloody well could, and they all took it seriously. And there is no way that a programme like that would get would even get anywhere close to the air these days. It's, that, they'd say it's too confusing and too frightening. Yeah. yeah. The, and the, I suspect like if they did make it today, the, it wouldn't be the same. Production values. I don't know. I think, see, this is part of my problem with modern television. I don't tend to watch much nowadays. Not not live. They can um, do it on I, Nickelodeon. No, it, you know, for for the YT group. No, I doubt it. The um, oh, yeah. the, the thing is, everything now on television is is well, whilst it's videoed, it's then given a film treatment. Uh, it's all single camera, mostly. Um, it's it's shot like a film, with a f filmic grandeur and everything else like that. Um, as such, the insides and outsides match up and everything else like that. But there was a period back in the 70s and 80s up to a point, but mostly the 70s, where um, you had film on exterior, Doctor Who, for example, film on exterior, videotape uh, in the studio. And yeah, it jarred a little bit. But doing something in a TV studio, multi-camera, 
is an art form of its own. And I don't think it should have died out like like that. There should still be multi-camera studio dramas like that. I, I it 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 has its own feel separate to what they're making nowadays. You know, I I still think they would be successful. You know, um, I, that, that that's I all I'm saying. I mean, they had to when when Inside Number Nine uh, decided to do. I think it was a Christmas episode. Um, and they decided to do it multi-camera because the story demanded it being a multi-camera studio, uh, old school. Uh, they had to find Graham Harper, who had experience of directing uh, on a multi-camera studio, and bring him in to direct it. Um, I think it's a lost art, and I, I think it's a shame. I, I do think that that's a shame. There's a certain... This is going to sound silly. A certain cosiness to it, a certain familiarity, but that's because I'm not that age... But I, I yeah. do think it's a lost art form. Yeah, I, I missed, I missed that. The, the place for today's and stuff like that that used to be on as well. Yeah. Just, was, was that another example? Of yeah, that? It was yeah, just like yeah. A... Multi-camera mm -hmm. studio, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. I mean, that's what everything was back in the 60s and 70s. And to point the 80s, by then, though, they'd got themselves you know, proper OB video, as we saw in Doctor Who, which was, oh, such a shame. Um, can you imagine? But, but, can you imagine *Remembrance of the Daleks* in in film on film? Oh yeah, you know, or *Battlefield* even. In *Battlefield*, that, that would have improved it. *Curse of Fenric* would have looked superb. Goodness yeah. me! But uh, with *Sapphire* and *Steel*, it's, it's it, the episodes. Right? So that was how long was that on for? How how many weeks would that run? For Siobhan? Would I that can't remember entire if that was six weeks or if that was or if it was eight weeks. I can't remember how many episodes in it. In, in total, about two and a half hours. Mm. And you can actually break the story down to Sapphire and Steel turn up. Time, a malignant force has broken through time. Uh, they go, they're trying to block its path and repair it. They use a boy and girl as bait. The lead turns up, breaks a, breaks a brick, the end. And that is <laughs> basically the story. And it's mm. that, that's, that's start, finish, end. But it's so well done. It is. <laughs> yeah. Next week... Um, we're going to be looking at assignment two, the railway station. Excellent. Oh, the railway one. Oh, yeah. However, Siobhan, yes, I think we need to bring up your homework assignment now. I don't have homework, love. I said homework. It's that simple. <laughs> I am auntie. Um, this is a revolution. Really, that's I, nice, I, I dear. think we need to address this you whole... go for it, Brian. Gelfling in the revolution. room. Gelfling. <laughs> the gelfling in the room. <sighs> Go on, then. I know where you're going with this. It will amuse me greatly. It's come to our attention that you have yet to watch anything Dark Crystal related. Yes, that's very true. Now... I'm not helping you out just, here, mate. You you, you, you brought it up. You, you go for it. watch it. I mean, but really, watching the series, then the movie will get give such a good perspective. But surely I should see it like everybody else and watch the movie first. You could, but it would ruin something. Did it ruin you, Brian, seeing it that way? Were you ruined? It ruined me. I have nightmares of fizzy gig. <laughs> yes, I haven't seen Labyrinth either. Oh, Labyrinth is lovely. I, I, I might see that in the pictures when I was a kid about two or three times. Big David Bowie fan. See, In fact, yeah. you're allowed to sort of get away with those two, but if either of you turns around and said they haven't seen The Princess Bride, then there's war. I have no Just idea what you're point. doing, but I'm scared. Oh, Bowie! We do ah, like a bit okay. of Bowie. All right. <laughs> hear me? Sorry, that one. Yeah, can you, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Sorry, I got a bit excited. I'm a big Did, David Bowie. I, I gathered, yes. I'll have yeah. to send you a mid your track. Um... <laughs> His version of the man who sold the world, you can then hurl abuse at me. Um, I liked it. Uh, anyway, yes. Uh, so, Simon 2 next week. Um, if there's any possible way you can watch it on your own in the dark, Brian, that would be great. Uh, probably not, because I'm going to be watching it at work. Okay. And also, um, I'm going to introduce the boys to Dark, Pi uh, dark Pixels, uh, which is on all four at the moment. It's... Um, a sitcom slash sitcom about gamers. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah. So next week, um, the timeless children, Ooh. and um, assignment two for sapphire and steel. 
Are you able to do an audio? Have you got time to do an audio? Maybe. Okay, how about we have a little look at the new Time War box? Gallifrey Time War. All right. Um, we'll, we'll do the first story on that. Um, and we'll see how we go for how much time people have to look at it. There's too much at the moment. That's the problem. Right then, I think that's us, isn't it? Sounds like it. Well, no, uh, we're we're missing a show. We're missing a show? Well, hang on a sec. Oh, Picard! Oh, Picard! It was worth a try. Yeah, that was fun. I love Patrick Stewart's French accent. I thought that was brilliant. Um, You can see Picard himself is reveling being back in space. Um, Yeah, that was nice. Anyway, that's it. And and how Eleanor is kind of like, you know, a fish out of water after leaving the temple. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. what? What you're expecting something? You're saying that expectantly. Say what you say. What you're going to say about Jerry Ryan? But remember, we have children watching. Well, no, no. Jerry Ryan was fantastic. The evolution of seven and nine into this vigilante who drinks bourbon straight up was awesome. Watching her go on, go on a you know vendetta-driven drive into free cloud just to kill this one person and let's take a moment now for fans of voyager you know for each ab it was upside down <laughs> <laughs> sorry carry on javon is taunting eddie chocolate <laughs> uh it's dairy milk it's just my favorite it's one of the five main scottish food groups Yep. Yeah, we yeah. Bat- I'm sure we bat- I'm sure we've got some restaurants where we bottle that as well. Yep. Cheese puffs. And f- deep deep fry. The only downside of this episode was Jerry Ryan's not He's trying his best. Regular. She's now finished. She's away. Yeah, yes. that's I it. Bye bye, Jerry. Oh, regular. She would have been perfect. I enjoyed this episode of Picard. It was a lot more fun, to be honest with you. Um The reptile guy with the hundred and fifty some odd Nasal receptors. Nasal receptors. <laughs> You'd have hated Tezros. <laughs> but should we do the big spoiler, the big reveal? Little Dr. Kaylee, whatever the hell her name is. Oh, yeah, she buddy. Yeah. She went dark side. Yeah. R.I.P. Doc- Dr. Bruce Maddox. Everywhere I've met, I haven't seen anybody say anything about the theme tune. Having They're saying they like it and everything else, but nobody pointed out it starts and ends with a flute, which is basically from the inner light. Just saying. That's true. Right, so that's the episode where Picard kind of has a, another... He yes. gets taken back and... Exp- yeah. And he learns how to play the flute. Oh, I never thought of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They did it once before in something, and I can't think about what it was. They used that instrument to call back to it, so to speak. Which I could remember. The whole him having the talk with Seven about recovering from being bored. Mm. That was very nice. It was nice. It was very light. It was a light touch as well. I mean... Yeah. But yeah. it was he also says he's, he's not fully... He's never been the same, and neither she. Uh, it was the whole thing around it. It's like, do you, th- do you think you'll ever 100% recover? I think he said no. Mm. Yeah. I, I totally forgot about that when I mentioned that last week as well. The whole thing about Picard was a Borg. I was like, yeah. yeah. So, of course, him and Seven and Nine have something in common. I was, I was I always wondered why Seven and Nine would come into this, but yeah. it's it's it, That was it's, it's back on par. It was after I could few yeah. two slow episodes. It's a shame. I was hoping Seven with, would join uh, the crew. Each up. Yeah, I thought Seven would. I, I was hoping Seven would be a regular. Yeah. Yes, oh bless her, she thought of him as her son. And yeah. then he grew up, joined Starfleet, and Died. got tortured. Yeah. D- the dismantled. darker side of the Roddenberry universe. Star Trek has certainly changed. It certainly moved away well, from Roddenberry. Couldn't... There's no two ways about well, we... that. Oh, yeah. well, we couldn't watch the scene with the eyes. With the, with the eyes getting pulled out. No, couldn't watch that. It's understandable. Yeah. I, I, I had visions of the movie Hostel. Oh. If you say so. 
you've never seen the movie Hostel, no. don't worry about it. It's torture porn. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is our tip for the week. <laughs> don't watch Hostel. Right, we're going. Say goodbye, boys. Goodbye, boys. Goodbye, boys. Right. Um. Yep. Uh. See you next Saturday. Uh. No. Next Sunday. Um. Nine p.m. GMT. Um. We'll have had less time than usual to. Uh. Process Doctor Who because it's a longer episode. So expect our minds to be a little bit frazzled. Ta-ra! <laughs> What you want for all that you believe It's right to fight for what we want To live the way we please As long as we have done our best Then no one can do more And life and love and happiness Are well worth fighting for They're well worth fighting for